So today we're going to talk about a couple stories here that I found extremely interesting. Uh, one of them is, well, they're both actually really good news for the Nintendo Switch. Uh, one more so than the other, but uh, it, it's hard to <laughs> really complain too much. Um, first off, in Japan, the Nintendo Switch has kind of hit a milestone. Uh, the Switch is about, you know, a few days short of its sixth month anniversary. Uh, I don't know if that's even a thing, <laughs> but six months out from release, a few days short, and the past week's sales numbers in Japan have come in, and well, guess what? The Nintendo Switch has sold 1,527,962 units, thanks to the 69,654 units they sold last week, according to Media Create. That means it sold over 1.5 million units in just under six months in Japan. That obviously, if you're paying any attention, puts it on pace to top 3 million in its first 12 months on the market in Japan. That's huge, and that's way better than the Wii U performed, and heck, it's kind of on pace, uh, maybe even surpassing the pace of the 3DS during its first year. Uh, in addition, we learned, uh, and this is just part of the same story, that Splatoon 2 has crossed a million units in Japan. That's not <laughs> that surprising, I guess. Splatoon 2 has been killing it in Japan and it just sold 1,004,180 copies. That is just awesome. Uh, I mean, the game's only been out for a month and a half or so, two months. That's just amazing. And uh, Monster Hunter Double Cross uh, just released. And yeah, that that's going to have a huge week in sales uh, when we get this week's run because Monster Hunter obviously does really, really well in Japan. So, let's talk about the next story. This next story I find extremely interesting because it's subjective in nature, but it kind of agrees with something I've been pondering since the release of the Switch. So, respected UK gaming publication, Edge, they're one of the few magazine publications left out there, published a huge 100 greatest video games of all time list. And these kind of lists are always just interesting. You know, you're going to disagree with a lot of placements. Everybody disagrees with a lot of placements. But what I found to be most interesting is that, you know, it includes all games ever released, and Breath of the Wild is number one. Let that sink in for a bit. Out of all the video games ever released, Edge Magazine has Breath of the Wild ranked as number one. Uh, I'll put a, a couple images up so you can kind of see what other games are right by. You know, Dark Souls is number two. Grand Theft Auto V is number three. Last of Us, number four. Bloodborne, number five. Half-Life 2, number six. Tetris, number seven. Number eight is Super Mario Galaxy 2, number nine. Ocarina of Time, and to round out the top 10 is Resident Evil 4. So it's really interesting looking at this list, and I'll put a link down in the description, you know, in case you want to dive deeper into it and maybe see some of the reasoning behind it. Uh, you'll need Edge Magazine itself if you actually want to read the article on it. But it's very interesting to me that Breath of the Wild is the number one ranked game of all time, according to Edge Magazine, because I actually agree with them. And it's interesting, obviously, because I haven't played every single video game out there, so I can only base how I rank video games based on the games I've actually played. Now, I have high respect for a lot of games I haven't had the opportunity to play, and maybe they would make a list just based on my respect level, but again, I haven't played them, so it's hard to rank them ahead of games that I have played that I actually admire. And Breath of the Wild is my favorite game, period. Not just favorite Nintendo game, favorite game of all time. Uh, number two, nipping at the heels for me, is Secret of Mana. And <laughs> it was kind of interesting because as I was looking at this list, uh, I realized the Secret of Mana didn't even make it. That's naturally disappointing for me, <laughs> but uh, that's okay. There are so many great games. Uh, just because it's my personal, uh, you know, what used to be like my favorite game of all time was Secret of Mana until Breath of the Wild came out. And I was reminiscing on this because a lot of times the latest and greatest games that come out are going to 
they're, they're the freshest in our minds, right? So we tend to overrank them, as it were. But I don't actually think it's the case of Breath of the Wild because I'm still playing it to this day. Now, to be fair, I, I still play a lot of games to this day. But when I'm thinking about it in, in my brain, just, just contemplating everything that Breath of the Wild was, I, I still just can't knock it off that number one perch. And it, it's an interesting thing to think about because as I still run the Zelda Informer Facebook page, I see a lot of people always offering up counter arguments because we post a, a lot of Breath of the Wild related content there because that's the Zelda game that came out this year and that's the freshest content being made by fans, you know, the memes and the art and all that stuff. And a lot of people just talk about how uh, Breath of the Wild isn't as great as people think it is and they don't understand why it's ranked so high. So I just want to take a moment and revisit a topic I probably talked about back in during March and April just talking about why Breath of the Wild, to me, is the greatest video game I've ever played crossing all genres and all video game systems. And it's it's hard to explain because it's a feeling. It's a feeling I get while I play. I feel like I am on this grand adventure, and people get this feeling in a lot of different games. You know, it's an adventure game, an action adventure game. People get this feeling in action adventures, and RPGs, and even FPSs, and tactical strategy games. I mean, you can get this feeling, sense of an adventure, uh, playing many different types of games. But Breath of the Wild just did it to me in this special sort of way. Now. I have to admit, I obviously have some bias towards the Zelda series. I haven't, you know, sat back and ran Zelda related websites for 18 years of my life um, if I obviously didn't have an affinity towards the Zelda series. So there's just an overarching theme of how much I love Zelda. But despite all of that, Secret of Mana was always my favorite game, and there was nothing that even came close. I mean, the closest game was World of Warcraft, which again was another game that always has continued, even to this day, 13 years later as it still gets expansion packs, to fill me with a sense of wonder and fill me with a sense of adventure. And that's a, a huge reason why I love World of Warcraft. Plus, I love the lore and everything else behind it. And... Even that couldn't top The Secret of Mana as a standalone game. So Breath of the Wild uh, barely, it was about, I'd say, I didn't really realize that it, it topped Secret of Mana for me probably until after I started replaying the game after I had beaten Gammon or Calamity Ganon. And I'm not going to dive into too deep of spoilers here, but I, I defeated Calamity Ganon and in most other games, once I beat the end boss, I don't replay it. I don't really feel this urge to replay games. And a lot of you out there are different. A lot of you replay your games over and over and over again. I'm not a person like that. Unless it's like a multiplayer game or a game like you know a sports title like Madden or something like that, I don't really feel this urge to constantly replay something. Uh, I generally had this amazing experience the first time around and that's what I want to hold on to that's what I want my memory of a game to be now there obviously are you know different occasions when when I replay games obviously when I need to record footage for something I'm using here on YouTube uh if I need to <laughs> if I need to try out a glitch or if I for some reason want to 100% a game. Now I'm not someone who's a big completionist and always want to 100% every single game I play, but like I am working on a second playthrough right now in master mode of Breath of the Wild, wanting to 100% it because I never did that the first time around, and I find myself enjoying the game just as much, you know, doing that with the intent of 100%ing as I did the first time I played through the game. Some of it's because obviously Master Mode added some new enemies and some twists and made things harder, but that's really an aside. It's the adventure that really has me hooked. And I realized as I started replaying in Master Mode that this game is just special. And it's weird saying that because no, it, it's not the greatest story in video game history. Heck, some might argue it's not even the best story in Zelda. I might have a nice counter-argument for you, but at the end of the day, we all enjoy different aspects of stories, and people, there's a lot of people that just weren't impressed by the story. Some people don't like the way the world is built. Some people don't like the way that the characters are presented, and they feel the characters are weak. Uh, and it's kind of interesting with the champions and how important they are. I think this future DLC coming out is really going to hit on... Uh, 
the individual aspects of these champions that uh, needed to be expanded upon beyond the brief introductions we get to them. And that's fine. Like I, I'm really looking forward to that DLC. And Breath of the Wild, none of that is really why it's at the top. It's not about having the best characters, uh, the best world, the best you know story, even the best art direction. I have other art directions I prefer more than Breath of the Wild. But it's the culmination of its approach to just playing the game. From the physics engine to the unique gameplay to how the world is built. I know that some people want more. Everyone wants more. I want Breath of the Wild to be more than it is too. But that's only because of how much I freaking love this game. It is... It, it's really hard to even wrap my mind around explaining the feeling because it is just a feeling I have only ever had one other time. And that was when I played Secret of Mana. And in fact, to ensure that Breath of the Wild was my number one game of all time, I actually went back and replayed the you know almost all of Secret of Mana and realized I'm not getting that feeling anymore with Secret of Mana. I don't know if it's because I outgrew it or because I know everything that's going to happen. I don't I don't know, but I still get that feeling with Breath of the Wild, and I usually don't get that when I replay games. And Breath of the Wild, just the way everything is built, regardless of if you think it's a good story, if you like the characters, everything feeds into this fully believable world. And everything's explained. Like If you think about a lot of games have, have enemies that respawn. It's just part of video games, and we don't question it. But Breath of the Wild gives you a reason that the enemies are respawning. It has to do with the Blood Moon. And yes, there's still a lot of mystery with the Blood Moon and why it still happens after Calamity Ganon is beat and blah, blah, blah. Like there's, there's a lot of mystery behind it. But at least it gives you an explanation for why enemies respawn. And it's little details like that that exist all throughout the world. Everything has a purpose. Nothing is just there to be there, right? If there's something unique in the landscape, or some unique rune or something there's a purpose to it there, there's a reason that it's there and i feel like the exploring of this world the, the playing of this game the fighting of the enemies the intimate use of the physics engine which i have never played a game that had a physics engine that's worked quite as well as breath of the wild did in the way that it works i've played plenty of physics based games but nothing to the level of breath of the wild in terms of the world scope in, in ter- basically in terms of the physics playground you get. Uh, and everything just works so well together that for one of the, maybe one of the first times since I was a kid, I feel like when I play this game, I am inside this world. I am transported into the world of Hyrule, exploring these interesting things because everything has a purpose. And I think feel like that's the difference i think with breath of the wild compared to so many other games that i've played is that there are these fine little details that aren't necessarily fully explained but the more you think about it and the more you research and the more you know about the zelda series especially the more you realize the purpose of its existence and no other zelda game i think has ever had this kind of attention to detail now there's always been little details in zelda but nothing quite like this in a world this large you know, I mean, for the longest time, I always thought that the northwest corner of uh, of the map is, was kind of useless, right? There's no divine beast, there's no big dungeons, yada yada yada. But then I finally got a chance to really explore a lot of those mountainous terrain. You start to understand why that terrain exists and uh, what its purpose was in Hyrule and 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 some deep history that might have happened in the past here. Uh, even though none of it's explained in the story. And I think this is why I don't really have an issue with the story in Breath of the Wild, as some people do, because while a lot of it takes place in memories or through little quips you get from characters and side quests, reality is that I feel a lot of the story is just told in the world itself and told in a way that it's it's not like someone's... You're not like you're, you know, at Zora's Domain in the game, right? There's no secret. You can read slabs of, of stone there that have some of the history of the Zoras in there that explain how they got to the state they're in today. But 
there are things in the landscape that give me all these additional details that just blow my mind that the developers even thought to put it in the game because it really interconnects everything. And it's part of the reason why I subscribe to the theory that I think Breath of the Wild is the game that converges all the timelines back together. Uh, is a Dragon Break, as an example, just because of the intricate way I feel like there's more to the story than meets the eye. And it's just, it's awesome. And everything just works together so well. And I'm sure other people have had this feeling about different games as well. I'm sure there are folks that had this feeling about Horizon Zero Dawn, Skyrim, uh, <laughs> Dark Souls, you know, Super Mario Galaxy 2. I mean, people have these feelings. But for me, it's so hard to even explain deeper than that because it's such a personal feeling I get as I'm playing the game. And it's a big reason I know I'm going to play this game at least all the way through Master Mode 100%. Not just because I want to do it for a live stream and for content here, but because I want to do it. And all the live streaming uh, does for me is remind me, hey, I really need to get back into it because there's always new games coming out. I'm playing Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Metal a lot right now. I'm working on a review for next week. And in the back of my mind, all I can think about is, okay, I want to finish this game so I can do my fair review of it, and then I need to get back into Breath of the Wild because I have NBA 2K18 coming out in a couple weeks, and I would like to spend some, you know, get another stream or so in of Breath of the Wild before then because I want to get back into that world. I almost don't even want to leave. When I stop playing, it almost pains me to turn it off and do something else, <laughs> even including making videos here. So it's just a very interesting feeling for me and it, all these feelings have just kind of re-emerged as edge ranked at number one because while i understand that there's a lot of places that said oh it's the greatest game ever made well you know once we get six months out i always felt once they sat back and they thought about it there's no way breath of the wild would have stayed as a number one game on any of the greatest video games of all time list and here it happened with edge uh showing that at least there's someone out there that maybe they didn't get out of you know out of breath of the wild what i did but at least uh they have some sort of agreement with me in my mind where I've had time to reminisce on Breath of the Wild. I've had time to sit on it and think and no, it still is my number one game of all time. Period. End of story. Anyways, folks, with the success of the Switch in Japan and Splatoon 2 and Breath of the Wild and, you know, pretty much all the Nintendo games you see on this top 100 list, I'm just blown away right now. We are in a golden age, a resurgence, a golden resurgence for Nintendo of uh of a nintendo i have haven't probably seen since the snes days but i'll get into that in another video anyways folks i am nathaniel rufflejans from nintendo prime if you like this video you know what to do and if you dislike the video hit that dislike button subscribe for more content like this and as always folks i will catch you in the next one